Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. Uh, well, you know me, I'm a bit of a shit kicker, so I thought I would uh, dress actually as millions of women have to or are required to by law on this planet right now. Uh, I will tell you this, as an American, uh, I'm kind of afraid to go out of my house dressed like this. I'd be afraid that somebody would shoot me in the back. Uh, although I have to admit, there was a time in my life when I was younger, when I uh, was a Baha'i, a very active Baha'i, where I did cover myself. I followed the Islamic tradition and covered myself. Uh, Baha'ism does not, uh, being a Baha'i does not follow Islam strictly. You'll have to discover yourself about Baha'i, but it's kind of an inclusive religion type of thing. And I found a lot of freedom in dressing like this when I was younger. Um, it sort of evens the playing field for women. And it kind of takes back our power. Like, we don't have to expose ourselves at all to be accepted. Uh, that's partly why I like this. And so what I thought I'd do tonight is I'm going to read... More of our book, Poison Power, by Dr. John W. Goffman and Arthur R. Tamplin. We are on Chapter 5, Promises, Promises. And uh, can't wait to hear what it says. The Congress of the United States, acting in the best of faith during the immediate post-war years, made a historic error in assigning duties and aims to the newly established U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. Atomic energy represented a poorly understood, new, potent phenomenon born during World War II. The possibilities and the hazards appeared to be staggering. It seemed logical in 1946 to organize a civilian commission assigned to explore and exploit a phenomena of atomic energy to the fullest benefit of the citizens. The Atomic Energy Commission was given this as one of its missions, but the staggering potential hazard was also recognized, and a second mission that of proceeding with the fullest consideration of protection to health and safety of the public was also assigned to the Atomic Energy Commission, the AEC. In this dual mission lay the historic error. No group of people would could be expected to do both things at the same time, promote a technology zealously and hastily, and at the same time proceed slowly and cautiously for maximum protection of public health. Go fast, but go slowly. This was, in essence, the directive given to the AEC at its inception. As the Commission explored the peaceful possibilities of the atom, one prospect seemed inordinarily, inordinarily uh, attractive. Utilization of the enormous energy of uranium fission to produce heat, hence steam, and to use the steam to drive electrical generators. The nuclear reactor derives its energy from nuclear fission rather than, all, than from fossil fuel to produce steam, provided everything goes exactly as planned. Unfortunately, at several steps along the way, Radioactive substances produced by, as waste byproducts in nuclear reactors are released into either air or water. The nuclear reactor itself and the possibility of harm from an accident there are only the beginning of the story. Huge quantities of radioactivity are produced in the course of nuclear electricity generation. Electrical power production is measured in kilowatts. Quote, a thousand watts equals one kilowatt, unquote. Or megawatts. Quote, one thousand kilowatts equals 
one megawatt, unquote. Hmm. Wow. So a thousand watts equals a kilowatt, and a thousand kilowatts equals a megawatt. So that means a hundred thousand watts equals one megawatt. A large power station of any kind produces approximately 1,000 megawatts. So that's 1 million watts. Wow, that's a lot. For a nuclear power plant operating to produce 1,000 megawatts of electrical power, we can estimate how much uranium will be needed. From this, we can calculate precisely how much of the various radioactive fission products will be produced, including such infamous ones as radioactive iodine-131, radioactive strontium-90, strontium-89, radioactive cesium-137, and radioactive krypton-85. These radioactive byproducts become familiar to us during the heated debates over radioactive fallout hazards when bombs were tested in the 1950s. Some of the radioactive byproducts of nuclear uranium fission have very short half-lives, others very long. The concept of half-life seems difficult. It is not. But mostly it is a convenient way to measure the potential for harm and how long it may last. If a radioactive sus substance has a half-life of one day, we mean that in the course of one day, half of the substance will dis decay or disappear. And the next day, one half of what is left will disappear. And the next day, one half of that will disappear, and so on. So a substance with a half-life of one day will reduce in radioactivity a thousand times in ten days. Hardly enough left to do any damage, you might say, within the very short time frame of ten days. But if a substance has a half-life of 30 years, like cesium-137, its radioactivity is reduced to a thousand times only after 300 years. One ugly feature plagues the operation of nuclear reactors for power generation. As the uranium atoms split, they build up radioactive byproducts, which eventually poison the reactor itself. Only a small amount of potentially fissionable fuel can be utilized before it must be removed from the reactor and transported by rail or truck to fuel cleaning or fuel reprocessing plants. Holy fuck. These motherfuckers, these people are fucking evil. Doesn't this just piss you guys off? This really pisses me off. I'm sitting here fucking reading this and it's like, what the fuck? They know exactly what they're doing. Catherine Higley, all these stupid motherfucking scientists, they know exactly what they're doing. They're fucking killing life on this planet with nuclear fission. Radiation has been pouring out of Fukushima for five years almost. They are doing nothing. You know what they're doing? They're changing the standards of allowable radiation. That's what their fucking plan is. Fuck you. Oh my goodness gracious. I can't read more, you guys. I have to stop. That that's just too much for me. Like, do they not get it? When I say we need to organize at a local level, I mean we need millions of people, hundreds of towns around this country. If we had three, four, five hundred towns around this country, calling up our elected officials, our city councilmen, our our council members, our county commissioners, our uh, elected officials at the state level, you know what, we could get pronto action. They listen to people. It does not take many. That's one thing that Donna Gilmore said. It does not take many. Good thing, because we don't have many. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to end here, you guys, because I can't read more of that book. It sure does piss me off. 
I'll talk to you guys tomorrow night and uh, put your courage feet on. Let's please let's do take action. Put an ad out in your little local newspaper to meet up with like-minded people. Figure out something to do. Let's get active, like more active than we could possibly imagine. Ciao. Put your courage feet on. Mm -hmm. Ciao.